Hello and welcome to another episode of Soul Nectar Show, that show that talks about all things essence, where we gather around the campfire and we share our stories of connection to that which is bigger than us, to the consciousness that makes all of this possible, that we're living, breathing, experiencing, and to those stories of synchronicity and mystical moments and big ahas. These are the kinds of reflections and stories I love to share on Soul Nectar Show. I'm your host, Carrie Hummingbird. And I also really enjoy deeply bringing people along that sacred journey of their own, you know, to open that magical door for, for each person to have that experience of the divine in their own lives. I uh, tell a lot of stories on this show, and a lot of times people will say, well, I really want to have those kind of stories for myself. Well, I can help you open that door so that you can start having those experiences for yourself. And I always love to interview people on this show who have amazing, incredible stories to share and beautiful, big, bright hearts, and today is no different. Today, I invite Laura Christine to the show. Welcome, Laura. Thank you so much for having me. This is going to be amazing. I already know. I am so excited. So Laura Christine teaches self-empowerment in her online membership, Club LC, on her podcast, Light of Conscience, and Tidbits, and through community building on social media. Her message is that no one can empower you but you, and when you learn how to tune into yourself and honor who you really are and what you really need, you become healthy, happy, confident, and successful. Find her podcast, club, and community on her website while you grab your 18 way shower affirmations. I love that. At lightofconscience.com. That's lightofconscience.com. And that will be in the show notes so you can look it up, click, and go. And so I want to get into it because I know we're going to have a juicy conversation today. I got interviewed on Laura's podcast, Light of Conscience. And so definitely check that out for the Carrie Hummingbird interview. And okay, so Laura, on my show, what I want to hear about is your story of awakening. You know, when did you start waking up? What was it like? And how did that lead you to where you are today? Let's get started in there. Whew, all right. So I like to call it curiosity. Something happens within or outside of you, seemingly, that makes you have to follow that other voice, right? The voice that's been calling you, right? The you one it. that taps. <laughs> yes. So, you know, I think all through my life, uh, like you, I had little taps, but I wasn't paying attention. And I, I went through high school, I went through college, and I tried to do the normal, like, okay, this is the American way of doing things. I'm going to college, I'm getting a degree. My mom would always say it doesn't matter what degree you have, just that you have a degree. And so that's what I did so that I could buy a house. And I actually, I got married pretty young as well. And we did the things. He had a job. I had a job. We had a house and I was depressed and I had anxiety and I was just not, I was just wasn't happy. So, you know, it's, it's really hard to actually determine the one thing. If there was one thing, I think it was a sequence of little things, but I did have the opportunity to volunteer at our local food co-op and you know I think maybe that whole local and organic foods stuff was the first kind of introduction to hey there's a different way of doing things because I just I wasn't aware of it and actually a landlady of mine in in the town I went to school in Bemidji up in northern Minnesota uh, introduced me to the local food co-op and boom, my world was opened to that. So anyway, I moved to a town. I made sure that town had one because I loved it so much and I was able to volunteer. Well, there was a girl there that worked there and she literally, like she floated. She just floated. She always seemed like she was blissed out, like just so 
in her own self and okay with who she was and happy. And I was just like, this girl, this girl's cool. Her name's Monique. She, she would not mind me sharing that. And then I saw a flyer in the bathroom or something, yoga with Monique. And I was just like, I didn't go to yoga. <laughs> I had done that actually in college, which is another, it's another awakening moment as well, actually, my, my yoga experience. But I asked her, I said, Monique, how do you learn how to teach yoga? And right off the bat, she was, oh, you have to go to Mary Beth. It's the most amazing thing. You'll love her. She's in India right now. But when she comes back, it was just like, okay. That's <laughs> so excited. Like, it was, it was like, apparently I have to do this. <laughs> and so I did. I'm going to tell you the story. I don't know how much you want me to talk. I can talk for hours. So cut me off if you ever need. I was working in a job in staffing. So I was trying to find employees for companies and I'm not really, uh, I'd rather help people. <laughs> so, and I, and it didn't really feel like that because I had to fire and I, you know, I hired, but I had to fire and stuff. And it was, it just wasn't, it was icky <laughs> to me. And the day, the first day of this yoga teacher training uh, was Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. So it was a Friday. I had asked my company about it. They said, yeah, that's, you know, that's fine as long as you do what you need to do. Well, the very first day, <laughs> I had to go to a company that was out of the way. I had to lay off a bunch of their employees because I spoke Spanish and they, a lot of them spoke only Spanish. And then I had to not just lay them off, I also then had to tell them, and this was told to me after I laid off the first person, okay, and then tell them, or him or her, I can't remember, if she wants to be able to get her job back, she has to work overtime today. And it, like, I was what, 25 or 26, and it just was, it felt like a knife in my heart, just like, like you can't lay someone off and then tell them they have to work overtime. I was so angry. Wow. Yeah. And That's it was going terrible. to make me, yeah, I know. And it was going to make me late for my first day of yoga teacher training. The thing that felt like it was for me. Right. So I was just like, ah, and then there was a blizzard of course on the way to the, <laughs> to the studio, but I made it there. I made it there late. Everybody was eating. I walked in and everyone was eating in silence. That was the thing they were to eat in silence. So no one really said anything to me, but I felt so calm and peaceful and like, oh, this is, this is, this feels good. This is right. Somebody had gone in to get the teacher. She had gone into her home for probably eat or use the restroom, whatever. And she ran in. She gave me a big kiss on the cheek. She hugged me. She said, how are you doing? Welcome. And I just said, oh yeah, this is home. And wow, it's been a long time coming. So there you That's go. That's beautiful. So, so you had this really horrendous experience out in the world, followed by going into this yoga space and receiving love. Oh, yeah. Even though you were Absolutely. late, like in, if you show up late in the normal space and either, you know what happens there. Yeah. Yeah. So, I could, yeah. because I, I'd called her the night before or something. And I said, I'm so sorry. I have to be late because my job needs me to do this. And I was the kind of person that was getting, I would get worked up about the smallest things. So this was big for me. So I was just like freaking out. And she said, don't worry about it. It's fine. Just come when you get here. It's fine. So it was, it was a really nice welcome home. Yeah, that's beautiful. So that whole thing about uh, things that, th that people that happen in the, in the outside world that seem really unfair and unjust, how does that relate to your life now? Now? Oh, wow. I have to go back again. <laughs> Because when I was a child and, and still now, I didn't realize this, but I'm a, I'm a highly sensitive individual and very empathic. And so I would be very sad a lot. And mom, my mom didn't know what to do. You know, my parents were kind of beside themselves. And I, I realize now it's because whenever I saw something hurtful, 
I would, I would feel so bad about what, like, why is this happening? I, I just didn't understand. I didn't have the ability to understand. So through my yoga teaching and learning, um, I really understand now that everything is and everything is for a purpose. And while it might be hard to understand, it's not really necessary to understand everything. One, I always thought I had to know everything. Not true. Um, but it is just to really, you know, it, it's all about neutrality and it's all about understanding that everything is, it doesn't help the situation for me to just let it ruin my my day. I can obviously feel, I can act, I can do the things that make me feel better about it. But like a recent example is the Amazon rate, uh, uh, yeah, the Amazon fires and how it just, it, it, it could kill me, <laughs> but it doesn't help the situation for me to just be mopey about it all day. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, what you're, what you're really speaking to you is being an empath and feeling everything in a world that's disconnected their feelings yeah and take actions based on not feeling but thinking and what that feels like to be in a world when you can feel everything and you can feel the impact of choices and you can feel the impact of words and people that are sort of um around you doing those actions and words they don't feel it yeah, or they don't understand the whole picture, maybe, too, of it, you know? I, I, feel, like, I feel like there is a disconnect. I feel like there is a, a sense of we can only really see a little bit when there's this whole big picture that we can see if we only look. We're not really taught to look, though. Yeah, we're not taught to look. So... Um, but that's what your podcast is really about is bringing light, you know, the light of conscience to everything around you, right? All the things like the rainforest and everything else. And so how do we do that? You know, we're feeling, we're perceiving in a world where there's people around us, not understanding the impact of the actions and words. So what's our role as light workers? You know, I believe light workers have a lot of there are different people and we all have different roles. So some light workers are going to be more on the front lines and doing the action and, um, you know, civil rights action and be kind of more even in the spotlight. And then there are those who are going to really focus within and everything starts from within, right? Everything. So no matter what's going on outside, how is that affecting you? first get get mm, curious enough to discover that right how is this affecting me and how and what is my role in this because sometimes your role is going to be to sit and pray sometimes your role is going to be to bring awareness to others about it and sometimes your role is going to be to give money to the situation but it starts from the knowing you have within yourself. And that to me is what conscience truly means. Conscience, if you look at the etymology of the word, con is with, and then science comes from the word to know. And so it's with knowing. And here's the thing. It's the knowing that exists where thoughts do not because the mind thinks, but the heart knows. So that's to me what conscience is, to go with your knowing. You know what I mean? <laughs> I love that. That's a beautiful description. And in order to know, to go with our knowing, we've got to quiet the mind. Yes. And we've yes. and become curious instead of judgmental, right? Exactly. Talk exactly. about that journey because you you said that curiosity was one of your best tools, and so I assume that you've had some experience with this journey of judgment to curiosity. <laughs> Just guessing. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> So again, as a kid, super, super, super self-critical, incredibly self-critical, 
that is judging. I was judging every second. I didn't realize it, but I was judging. How am I doing? How am I showing up? Do people like me? Am I doing the right thing? Always asking, am I doing the right thing? Is this right? Is this right? Like there's a right and wrong, you know? And, and there's a right and wrong for me. Yes. But I wasn't asking. I was thinking, <laughs> is this right? Is this right? Is this right? Ah. And so fast, fast forward, I'm going to take us to college now. So I'm in college doing the thing because it's, because I'm supposed to do it. And I remember a song, I think it might've been by Dashboard Confessional, but I can't remember. Or Bright Eyes. I don't know. One of the two. <laughs> and there's a line in one of their songs and it says, don't follow your heart because it just seems to get in your way. And it resonated so much for me in college because I was basically doing everything with my logical mind. My head is like, this is what I have to do because this is what you do. And my heart, my emotions, that's just in my way. I'm moving forward from up here. Wow. That's why I was anxious. That's why I was depressed because I was a curious girl. I wanted to do in high school, I wanted to be in drama, but I played sports. So that was my excuse for not being in drama. And I loved sports. So I don't regret, regret that at all. I wanted to be in art classes. I had two art classes, but because I was also an honors science kid, the art classes were always scheduled at the same time as the honors science and math classes. So that was my excuse for not doing so much art. You know what I mean? Do you see how it was like, okay, the head things, the head things. And I was making excuses. Well, when it came to college, I found, I found a major and I was going to be a model builder. And that's a, an industrial technology, you know, building models of things that were going to be created, buildings, bridges, you know, things like that. So I did that for a semester or maybe a year. And then I thought, you know what, screw this. I don't want people telling me what to do anymore. I'm going to be an art major. So I majored in art. I took, a Spanish, <laughs> I took a Spanish class because I thought I had to. I didn't, but I thought I had to. So I took a Spanish class, loved it. I'm going to be a Spanish major too. My, my life completely changed when I changed my majors to some things that I really loved. Like, how did it change? Tell us a little bit more about that. Wow. Yeah. Good one. Cause I was still depressed. <laughs> I was still depressed because I still thought I had to get like a normal job when I left college. Normal. So, but the way my life changed is that I started to do things that nourished me. I painted, I would spend hours. I didn't, I didn't even know I had to pee. I would spend hours painting. So I was getting, I was allowing myself to be creative. I was allowing myself to feel the feelings and express them in, in certain ways. I was allowing myself not to think so much like with Spanish too. I mean, obviously you need your brain for, for learning a new language, but it was something I loved. So I was connecting with other people who I loved. And one of my professors in Spanish was super hippie, super organic, super, and you know, just super spiritual. And she really, really was a mentor for me without even knowing it. But just the way she acted and lived, I said, oh, this, this. So it was not exactly conscious about how my, how my life changed, but it shifted. Absolutely. And of course, hindsight is 2020. So I can go back and look at, oh, wow. Yeah. That was a necessary step for me to do this. Yeah. And what I'm seeing as you're telling the story is that, you know, when you switched into the art and you started following something you enjoyed, well, art also is, uh, is an opener. So it can be a releaser and it opens the door to, you know, puts you in presence with yourself yes. and with your, with your feelings and your body experience more so than your mind. And so in that way, it can also be a, a door to release like pent up energy that's been repressed and ignored for a long time, hence your yeah. depression. So it actually oh, yeah. can be an, a doorway to let those things out, which is healthy, actually let out. Very, very, very much. Yes. And it's a doorway to, as you were saying, being more in tune with what you need, being in, more in tune with your, your own 
your own self, not just your thoughts. Yeah, absolutely. Your full self. And so yoga also is a practice that's put you in touch with your full self. Yes, absolutely. I remember being at one of my first, not the first yoga class, but another one early on. And we did this like twisting pose where our, our hand was up and we were supposed to look up our arm. And I looked up and for the first time in my life, I felt beautiful. And I was in my 20s, for the first time, I saw beauty in myself. That's gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah, and now you can embody that and bring that forward. Once you've yeah. had that experience, it's sort of like once we tap into the experience, then we can bring it back for ourselves over and over again. Yeah, we can. And then we can also see and recognize the beauty in everybody else. And hopefully, even just by giving attention to them. It doesn't even have to be saying you're beautiful, which by the way you are, but <laughs> hopefully they can get in touch with that beauty within themselves as well. Yeah. Getting in touch with the beauty within yourself. You know, there's a lot of things I notice because I work with women. There's a lot of ways I notice how we trip ourselves up, you know, by comparing ourselves to other people and thinking that somebody else knows how to do it better than we do. <laughs> so like that right and wrong game you were talking about, like there's, there's a right way. And then you see somebody who's really happy. You go, Oh, she must be doing it the right way. I got to figure out what that is. Yeah. But her right way, it might not be yours, right? Like it's, it might be different. Talk about that a little bit too. Oh, exactly. Exactly. I even pull this into how, because I, I have an online business. And so I know a lot of people um, who are starting out or, have been working at, uh, and I've been self-employed for 10 years and I'm finally now feeling like, okay, I'm in my body now. Like this is, this was, this is where I was, I've always been trying to get to, right? I'm finally feeling like I'm pretty much that obviously it always keeps evolving, but there are so many courses out there and club, you know, memberships, like I have my club. It's, it's not teaching you how to, you know, make something, but there's so many options for people out there to build this business within two months or three months. And it's, you know, it worked for me. So this is how you do it. And ah, uh, yeah, it worked for you, but how many years did you spend getting into who you really are so that it works for you? So you know, what works for you. And telling somebody who's just starting out, hey, this worked for me, it's going to work for you, is, is almost cruel because they're not at the same, they haven't done the internal work that that person has done for probably years to get to where they can make something that works. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's like, the overnight success with, that took like a dozen years to make happen. <laughs> Exactly. I actually exactly. had somebody say that to me the other day, somebody that knows my former partner. He reached out to me and he said, he made a comment on something I posted and he reached out to me privately and he said, you know, he used the phrase meteoric rise, like your meteoric rise to fame. And I was like, okay, like this has been eight years of like intense, deep personal work on the journey doing the work and at least five years of getting out there, learning how to talk about it, getting in front of people, sharing, doing my inner work about the sharing, doing my inner work about owning this aspect of myself. Like it's just so much, so much that I've explored and it's all been a fantastic journey. So it's, it's you know, I don't want to make it sound like it was, you know, cumbersome because <laughs> it's great, you know, and it, you know, it didn't happen overnight. You know, you've got to climb the mountain to see the view. Exactly. Exactly. And just, yeah, doing the inner work and, uh, something was, something was in my head and it left. <laughs> like, uh oh, oh it's good. it comes back. <laughs> but no, it's, it's all good. It's all good. But yeah, to just, uh, oh, I know what it was. <laughs> I was going to say, so that's the kind of the gap that I believe Club LC fills because, and I don't know if you want me to talk about this yeah, here or yeah, now. No, yeah, absolutely. But because it's about tuning in and getting really acquainted with 10 aspects of yourself that we're not taught about in school, that we have more than one body. We have our physical body, but we have nine more. And the roles that each of them play and how we can strengthen them so that we, when we're faced with, hey, this is the class for you, do we know 
that is it, or that sounds awesome. And I want that success, but that one's not going to work for me. Can you be confident in knowing, you know? And not from here, not from the mind, Mm -mm. because the mind usually leads you astray to spend a whole lot of money you probably didn't need to spend. (laughs) Been there. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, me too. So, you you know, you got to, I mean, I think it all helps because it all brings you to the place, right? You got to go through the layers, but but talk about the difference between, like, what is the difference between doing it from the mind and doing it from the heart? It's a different feeling. Um, The... (laughs) The head, it's kind of like, it can be excited. It's really hard sometimes to discern because from the head can be very exciting, but beware of excitement, actually. Excitement and fear are almost the exact same energy. They, they do the same thing to the body. So if you're excited about something or if you're fearful about something, you can actually turn it into excitement and that's kind of fun but still beware. If you're excited, sleep on it and feel it in the morning. Sit quietly and see how you feel when you're calm. Because that, my friends, is a lot more accurate (laughs) than, ooh, ooh, exciting, (laughs) you know? Yeah, I like to think of it too, like like the the ones inside of you. Like I've learned how to discern that and actually... I, cause I get, I get very excited about things and then want to go off and just create it and just like plunge right in and create the whole thing. Cause I'm a manifester and like, before you know it, bam, there it is. And then sit back and there's just no energy with it. Right. Yeah. I could. Yeah. I mean, that can be too, you know, uh, <laughs> sometimes we have to do that though, too, just to get it out. It's that creation. Like oh, I'm a creator. I'm going to create. And then, uh, but there's nothing wrong with that too. That's something I think a lot of people feel like, oh, I failed because I did something and then there was no more energy for it. And I just gave up. Sometimes giving up is actually the thing that you need to do. Uh, This kind of goes, ties back into your story about your eight year long journey of doing the work. Sorry about the dogs. I hope you don't hear them. Um, And knowing that you are learning how to talk about it and you're learning, but it probably didn't all revolve around this book. That's this kind of end product. We go through different phases, right? I mean, how, when did you write the book? Uh, you mean my book that I just put out? Yeah. Well, I, that just flowed through me. That was easy. Right. Yeah. Right. It was like, bam, you know, so February you're ready to May. Yeah. So your journey <laughs> seven years ago, six years ago, five years ago, you didn't realize, oh, this is culminating in this book. No, I had no idea. I didn't even know I was writing it in February until I got the message. Exactly. What? That's exactly my 2019 plan. (laughs) So as we're on our journey to just not be super attached to any certain outcome and just having that faith and that knowing to know that And when I say no, I don't mean from the head. I mean the knowing, the internalized embodied knowing that we're going the right direction, even if it looks like failing. Failing is not even a thing in my book. It's just a step along the path. So do you do, um, when you, I I do a lot of pendulum testing for for my truth sometimes. Like if I'm in a hurry and I don't have time to sit down and be still for long enough to get clear, (laughs) because that could take a while. Uh, if I had to make a decision like right then, I'll use the pendulum because I, you know, I've realized that my mind is a little, can be problematic. It has a lot of thought tunnels. I've gotten rid of a lot. I've like, you know, mm-hmm. I've erased a lot of those thought tunnels just by exploring them and releasing them with conscious choice. But, but there's still thought tunnels, you know, and, and anytime I get like log jammed on a decision, I know that my ego is involved. It's like, okay, if there is a yeah. block then my ego's involved. So now the job is to figure out why is my ego involved in this thing? Like, is it involved because it doesn't like the direction things are going because my soul's leading the way and it's going to get more power or does it not like it because of some other reason, you know, the ego has a lot of ploys. So, you know, in terms of intuition, what's your journey been like sorting through, you know, egoic things versus your soul guidance? Yeah. I learned the hard way every time. I, <laughs> the best way sometimes. 
my head oh man so i have five planets in libra libra is an air sign which is the mental energy sign <laughs> i had an astrology reading once this is hilarious and she said you don't let your mind get out of the way for, for your you know for your life like she's just like you do not let your mind get out of your way <laughs> and i'm like bing so as far as pendulums, pendulums are a wonderful tool. And I know a ton of people who use them. When I was learning pendulums back in my first yoga teacher training, my mind, my mind was just too strong. And I, I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. And I couldn't like, like, yes, no. And then I'd say something that was a yes, and it would do something else. And I was just like, okay, this isn't working for me. So pendulums, I don't use, but most people find them very useful. So if you haven't practiced with them I I definitely recommend it because it is really fun and maybe now now that I've come 10 years forward, <laughs> maybe now you could use one. maybe now maybe now I'd be fine with it um, but because I said yes to so many things that I knew in my heart I didn't want to do um, enough times to now know okay if I don't know the answer don't respond right now just wait and I just I do I let things um, I let things sit longer now. I don't say yes right away if I don't know. And do I still make mistakes? What's a mistake? Do I still say yes to things that I wish I hadn't? Yeah. Yeah. But they're not as big and they're, they're not as frequent. <laughs> so, so using my intuition, um, let me, let me, let me see how I do that. I guess it's a really much of a feeling. I allow myself to feel it in my body and it's and it's a quick. And this is something, the neutral mind is the aspect of ourselves. It's one of the 10 bodies. And the neutral mind will give you a clear yes or no within nine seconds when it's strong. To strengthen the neutral mind, you meditate. You know, you get, you, you do the yoga stuff. Um, and it'll take the input of the positive and negative minds and, and give you a clear answer. And so I guess just having worked with that a lot helps me to know. And when I don't know, then it's a no for now. Does that make sense? Yeah, actually, that sounds like my parents when I was growing up. If you need an answer right now, the answer is no. <laughs> that's what they used to say to me all the time. If you oh, need an answer right now, the answer is no. That's a yeah. smart thing for a parent to say. <laughs> yeah, because they're like, we got to get home and talk about it. So you're asking us when we're at work and you're trying to get one to say yes and all that, you know, oh, us against oh, yeah. each other. And, you know, they're like, yeah, if you need that answer, the answer is no. <laughs> Wait till we get home. So I think that's actually pretty good, even though I didn't like that growing up. But that actually makes a lot of sense in terms of, you know, dealing with your inner personality is like, oh, if you need an answer right now, well, the answer is no, because I need time to consider it. You know, mm -hmm. and also, are you emotion? Are, do you know what your human design type is? Are you also emotionally centered as well? Per, uh, I don't know. I don't, you don't know about that? Well, human design type is really interesting, so we don't have to go there right now. But I know that I am um, emotionally centered. And so as an empath and as an emotionally centered person, I have to, you know, I get big waves of emotion. And so I can't make a decision on in the middle of the wave, you know, because mm -hmm. that's going to be a temporary decision. I have to wait till the whole wave passes, which takes whatever amount of time it, time it takes. It could take an hour. It could take a week, you know, who knows? Yeah. And in, until it's settled to the place where I can get to that peace and quiet you're talking about to make the solid, you know, to have the knowing inside of the yes or the no. Yeah. And that's really smart. I think we live in a society and a culture that instant reactions and instant answers are kind of, I just snapped. I'm sorry. That's going to sound bad on your podcast. Oh no, it's totally okay. <laughs> but instant answers and, and that are really expected. You know, now everybody has a phone in their pocket. And, and so it's almost like then we expect it of ourselves, but it's really, really healthy to say, I need some time to think about this. You don't have to know right away. That is the difference between the masculine and the feminine and the, you know, the, the brain, the mind and the heart, you know, and I tend to equate the masculine energy with the mind and the feminine energy mm -hmm. with the heart. 
And that is the difference between them. And there are some people who are geared towards yes or no, right? Like they're geared yeah. there because they're gut oriented and, and that's how it shows up for them. They have a strong yes or a strong no in their gut and they just know. But not everybody's made that way. And I think, you know, one size does not fit all. And that's the thing we need to understand is that your pathway into knowing your intuition might be very different than what other people, just like what you're saying about these coaches that are like, hey, I did this, this, and this, that's going to work for you. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. It depends on if their path and their configuration is similar to yours. Exactly. Exactly. One size fits all, not usually. Not usually. Not usually. So how do you build community? Because that is like something that we all need to do. I mean, just to feel a sense of belonging, but also for an entrepreneur or something like that, it's important mm -hmm. also to build community. So how, what are some key aspects of building community that you've noticed? Definitely. It's, it's very interesting. I recently realized that I absolutely love this. <laughs> so I've always loved to make people feel comfortable being themselves. And I've always loved when I can introduce somebody to someone else because they're just, they need to meet. It's, it's just always been a thing for me. And I realized, what is social media? If it's not social, then what is it? And I have taken some coaching from a, a woman that, uh, she focuses on Facebook ads and building your uh, business through through that, but she's very mindful and very, uh, you know, holistic minded and spiritually minded. And she understands how important it is to have actual connection. Um, she, she serves women and she serves mostly um, like high vibe, I'm going to say entrepreneurs. So she, you know, she gets it. And I've just learned like, you've got to post posts that are fun for people and you've can't just post about yourself. And I don't even like that feeling of only posting about myself. I, I want to know what other people need, want, what are their interests? Like let's have fun. So it's, it's just a matter of like experimenting and having fun if social media is not fun for you, make it fun. You know, yeah, and it, you know, this is funny because sometimes people say, Oh, I don't like Facebook anymore because all I see is negative stuff on my feed. And then I look at them and I say, well, your feed is reflecting you. So like, I mean, I've just kind of realized this thing where yeah. social media feed actually reflects you, your state of mind. And you know, at the, I mean, at the pragmatic sense, it reflects who you're connected to and what kind of things that they post, right? So that's very pragmatic. But I also believe in this sort of esoteric, you know, spiritual way. It, the universe just sort of pops into your feed through whatever algorithms. I don't even think it matters. I think, I think that's the explanation for it. But I think actually the universe is doing it. And it just populates your feed to show you your current state of mind you know, because yeah. you wouldn't see it if it, you would just ignore it if it wasn't resonating with your state of mind. You're, you're going to pay attention to the things that are totally in your state of mind. Yeah. And, and I, I do, I look at them like unfollow people. It's not that hard. Like you see a post you don't like, just unfollow them. It's like, it's not that hard. And, and I say, that's not my experience at all. And I was recently talking to somebody who said that like everyone she knows from high school, she's younger than me. So everyone she knew from high school is on her feed. And I feel like I'm a little blessed because I wasn't, I wasn't even on Facebook until after college. I started a Facebook profile because I started to work on my own as a yoga teacher. I'm like, okay, I better get on Facebook. You know, that was my, I better do it. Wow. Am I happy I did, <laughs> you know, because of the connections you can make. Yeah. And I like that you said about not just posting about yourself and what I was getting was um, engagement. That was the word that kept mm -hmm. coming to me. It's like, you know, community requires engagement, which, which requires yeah. people to really, you know, find themselves in your story or find themselves in your question or your inquiry, your inquiry or what you're sharing, you know, on your page. That's important for them to find themselves in that. And that creates a connection. So it's not just like, you know, talking to dead air, you know, like you're actually 
yeah. connecting. Your intention is to connect with others, not just kind of be witnessed. It is absolutely. And I do want to say to everybody out there who's thinking, gosh, I wish I had more following on Facebook or on Instagram. You do have to put content out even when nobody is looking because once you start to get followers, there has to be something there. You have to put energy. This is in literally anything. You have to put energy into the thing you want to grow or it's not going to grow. So don't get discouraged or get discouraged, but then pick yourself up and, and, and just keep going and keep shining and keep learning. You know, reach out to me. I'll connect you with the coach that I'm working with. She has a free Facebook group. You know, it's like, I love to connect. So <laughs> ask. Awesome. So you also have, um, you, you do a lot of work with your club LC and your community on your website, and you've got these 18 Wayshore affirmations. So tell us a little bit about that on the way out here. What are those, what are those Wayshore affirmations? What are they for? Uh, tell us more right. about them. <laughs> right. So when I was first, when I first kind of came up with the word way shower, when that kind of just came to me, like, that's what these people are. That's what I am, I guess, too. I, I thought, you know, there are signs that you can, you, there are signs that you're a way shower. Perfectionist or a rebel. Um, I think we both might have had some of each. Um, yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, super self-critical. You may be a little judgmental of the world. You know, things yes. like that. So what I did was I actually have a couple of podcast uh, interviews with people that are also way showers and, and we just talked about these 18 signs. And then what I did was, well, these all are kind of things that have a negative um, kind of, they're, they're a little bit seen as negative, but actually they're really good attributes because you're not here to fit and you're here to change the world. So I turned them all into affirmations, which you can use any of them or all of them anytime you want and really own your power as a way shower. So like one of them might be, I'm a disruptor. <laughs> yeah. I don't think, I don't think that's, <laughs> that's the words I use, but you, you certainly can <laughs> add that in. You can make that a good thing. Yay, I'm a oh. disruptor. I'm disrupting all the patterns. Yeah, it is a good thing. Like, it's not a bad thing. Making people uncomfortable left and right. But then other people are like, thank you for doing that. So you exactly. know, you can't there's please two them sides. all. Yeah, there's two sides on them. every coin. <laughs> yeah. And we're not, you know, as White Eagle is always telling me, you're not here to be liked. I was like, dang. Well, I like you a lot. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I like you yeah. too. too. Yeah, light workers, we tend to like each other because <laughs> we're in the same perspective. True. But, but yeah, it's definitely it's tricky, isn't it, to be a, a to be a light worker in the world and to be you know to feel different and to know you know to have these drives to see the things in the world to be perceiving as we talked about as the empath and to feel everything and to be here to disrupt it and change it and then all of that. And then want to be liked and want to be supported. And, you know, it's like, woo, that's, this is a messy soup. But we're, that's what we're here to do, isn't it, Laura? <laughs> it is. And, you know, once you start asking the questions and start going into that curiosity and really moving through, the people will show up. It might take a while and you might feel lonely for a while, but they will keep going on the path and people show up. It is magic. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. So that's how they can connect with you. They can, uh, so if you guys like uh, what you've heard from Laura Christine today, you can go to her website, uh, lightofconscience.com. And of course, that's going to be in the show notes. And you can get your 18 way shore affirmations there and start practicing them. And then you can get connected with Laura as well. Because once you sign up there, you'll, you'll get connected with Laura Christine in her site. And is there anything else you want to share with everybody while, while we're here? Just keep shining. Just keep you shining. Know, I'd love to have some super wise, awesome, like, boom. But I just keep, keep glowing, keep growing and, and be you. Be you. Be you and shine you. You're the only one who can do it, right, Laura Christine? Absolutely. No one can be you. No one can you. be you. You're the only one with the thumbprint. So whatever. If you don't do it, nobody will. Yep. That's for sure. 
All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this. And if you did, please leave us a review on iTunes for sure. And you can also leave us comments on uh, soulnectar.show or on YouTube. Please like it, review it, leave us feedback because that helps other people to find it because that software out there, that's what they do. They like, how many people have seen it? How many people like it? How many people love? And then they, then they promote it out to more people. So if we want to spread the word on this kind of stuff, like say, say you're in the position of, of thinking like, we think like, there would be more people being more conscious then share this out it will help to spread it out there even if nobody looks at it it's still getting out there so definitely share it out definitely leave a comment on itunes and and subscribe to soul nectar show subscribe to light of conscience and go check out laura christine's podcast and, and make sure that she also gets the reviews and uh yeah that's a lot of requests for now so i'm gonna give you guys kisses for doing all that so I'll say thank you <laughs> So would you like to give kisses to everybody and say thank you in advance, Laura and Christine? Heck yeah, thank you. Here they come. We love you. And we'll see you next time on Soul Nectar Show. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much. <laughs>